All right, uh, let me get started here. So this and the next three questions, let me do them as a group. They were uh, the kind of questions I hadn't done in the past because I thought they were easy. Um, and I think uh, by which I mean here, I'm just uh, using the definitions. I'm These are application of definition questions. In some sense, there's a formula that you look up and plug the numbers into. Uh, that's the sense in which I thought they were easy. And you know, if they're easy, then I should be able to do them really quickly. So I should do them now. So this first question, it asks, how much work does a supermarket checkout attendant do on a can of soup? He pushes some distance horizontally with a force of some amount. So let me write down the definition of work. This is the definition of work. Work is defined as the dot product or the inner product between force of vector and the displacement vector. And um, the, so what this uh, uh, dot product means is if you have a force vector in one direction and you have um, displacement vector in another direction, then you can describe the relationship between these vectors with an angle between them and with this description of relative directions of the vectors. What work, the formula for work works out to be is the magnitude of the force times the magnitude of the displacement, I'm indicating magnitude by lack of the arrows, times the angle, cosine theta, um, so cosine of the angle between them, cosine theta. This is uh, what I've presented as the physics definition of the dot product um, in other lecture videos. So I'm just going to use this uh, definition. And here, when they say, give us uh, these pieces of information, that it's um, um, that uh, the push is being done horizontally. I, I think uh, it's basically telling us that the theta here will be zero. So cosine theta here will be one. So we don't actually have to worry about the, the relative directions of, I mean, we do, and the, it, the result looks like uh, it, we haven't worried because um, it's just going to be force times the displacement. So let me do that. Uh, oh, can I do this in my head? Let me give it a try. So 0 0.75, that is, that's a 3 fourths. So what I can do is I can multiply this by 3, which will give me 7.5, and divide by 4, which will give me uh, 1, what is it doing? Uh, which will give me, um, so 7.5 divided by 4, 1.8, um, three, seven, five. <laughs> I don't know. If I did it wrong, then I will, okay, use the calculator. <laughs> Good. Uh, I think the exact number was 1.875. Um, yeah, 1.875. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me do the next question. I think there was 1-6. So I need to skip to that. 1-6. Okay, so in this question, it says uh, some mass of the person climbs the stairs, gaining a 2.2 meter in height. Okay, let me sketch this out. So um, I have some set of stairs here, and what we are being told is that uh, someone is climbing these stairs, and when they've reached the here, the height that they've gained is given by um, that quantity there, height. It asks, find the work done to accomplish this task. Ah, this is where this uh, definition of that product actually becomes really useful because um, what it is is, um, so as this person climbs the stairs, so let me draw a quick free body diagram to illustrate the forces that are involved. So in this free body diagram, um, so at each step of the way, the person basically isn't accelerating a lot. And as the, as the person is climbing up, there's always going to be gravity acting downward. So for the person to be not accelerating downward, they must be applying some upward force so that the net force approximately ends up being zero. So there's some kind of applied force here. 
So that net force is approximately zero, which just means, you know, your net force, uh, the applied force is going to be mg. Um, it, it's a, a bit longish way to get at something that I think a lot of you already knew, but I do think it's good to kind of step through this reasoning so that um, you don't leave gaps in your understanding of mechanics. So uh, you are looking at, okay, how much work did this... Um, did this apply the force to do as this person climbs up and even though there's this horizontal distance what you might call delta x you don't need to worry about them because with this dot product it's really the displacement in the vertical direction delta y which is along the direction of apply the force that's the only component of displacement that's involved in the work being done so you can just ignore the horizontal displacement, which you are not given, and just to take this as your displacement that results in work being done. So I can say in this context, the work being done is the applied force times the height. And just plug in the numbers. Um, so applied the force is mg, so it's going to be mg times height. And uh, if this is looking familiar with some of the other expressions you've seen, like gravitational potential energy, that's because this is how we drive gravitational potential energy. So uh, let me plug in the numbers. It's going to be um, mass, 77 kilogram, times g, 9.8 meter per second squared, basic SI unit, times the height, 2.2. So 1660 joule, that sounds about right. It's actually pretty high. Um, okay, so the answer is correct. Uh, let me move on to the next two questions. Uh, they are slightly different in that the formula we are using is different. Uh, so 4-1 is the next two question. But it's uh, still similar in that um, all you are doing is um, applying the, the definitions, applying the formulas. So let me erase these um, work definitions and uh, write down the other definitions that will be useful for this question. So uh, it's, a, it's asking how fast must some mass of elephant, elephant to move uh, in order to have same uh, kinetic energy. So it's the formula for kinetic energy that I need. So um, the kinetic energy, as you've seen, either derived or defined. This is one of those things where it's a kind of chicken or egg problem. <laughs> so if you consider kinetic energy to be defined by this expression, one half times mass times the speed squared. And this is speed squared, depending on context, sometimes it's useful to write it as vector dot product to, the, to itself. Um, but at the moment, that's not necessary, so let me just say speed squared. Uh, you could take it this way. This is perfectly fine. I guess, um, yeah, yeah, I don't have any objections. Now, if you took this as the definition, then this can allow you to prove what we call work kinetic energy theorem. And that's what your textbook does, I think. And uh, you can actually go the other way. <laughs> you can kind of start with the idea that work results in some change of energy. And um, noticing the same relationship that's in work kinetic energy theorem, you can go backward and say, well, in order for work done in the absence of any potential energy, other forms of energy, I want that to represent a change in kinetic energy. This must be the form of kinetic energy for that relationship to work out. You can do it that way. Um, again, chicken or the egg, just to <laughs> make sure you are not making it circular. Um, just stick with the one and uh, drive the other from the other. Um, you've done. So, anyways, I, for this particular question, you don't really need the work kinetic energy theorem. So let me just stick to the um, the expression for kinetic energy, which we'll say is the definition. And the question is asking how fast must uh, again let me start labeling things. So let me label this the mass of the elephant must move. So how fast? So we are looking for the speed of the elephant and we are looking for them to have the same kinetic energy, meaning the kinetic energy of the elephant will be the same as the kinetic energy of the sprinter. As a sprinter, some mass of the sprinter running at 8 meters per second, a uh, speed of the sprinter. Oh, let me do it this way. Since I'm using SageMath as my fancy um, 
um, glorify the calculator. Let me actually use this as the computer algebra system as a way to do algebra. So I'm going to declare all my, all my variables, mass of the elephant, speed of the elephant, uh, kinetic energy of the elephant, I don't believe I need that, so I'm just going to leave that alone. Mass of the sprinter, speed of the sprinter. Okay. So the equation I need is a statement. The kinetic energy of the elephant is the same as the kinetic energy of the sprinter. Kinetic energy of the elephant in algebraic terms is one half mass times the speed squared. And I say that's equal to the two. Um, this is an assignment symbol, and two of them together means one side, left hand side, is equal to the right hand side. So one half times mass of the sprinter times the speed of the sprinter squared. And this is an equation. I'm going to assign that into a variable equation. This is again assignment symbol. And once I've done that, then I can um, use the solve function. And uh, I've shown the internal documentation of how this works. Um, if you haven't seen it or if you're not sure how to use it, you should look through it so that you know how to use the solve function. I'm just going to use it. Uh, I already know the syntax, uh, solve. And I'm solving the for the equation. Equation. I have one equation and uh, I have one unknown that I'm trying to solve for, the speed of the elephant. Um, and let me put this into... Um, uh, variable so that I can look at the solution, pick out the ones I want, and we'll go there. Um, I think if I do this, it'll print. Let's see. Ah, yeah, it printed. Okay, good. So it's actually giving me two solutions. And I hope once you look at it, it makes sense. It's giving me two solutions because my equations involve these things being squared. So whether speed of the or the VE is negative or positive, it gives you the same result equation wise. Now for the speed, I'm looking for positive answer. So let me just pick out the positive answer. That'll be the second element or index, uh, index one. Uh, and um, to find the number two plugin, let me use the substitution syntax to plug in all the numbers. So I have the, um, the mass of the elephant is 3,100 kilogram basic SI units. I have mass of the sprinter, that's a 65 kilogram basic SI units. And I have the speed of the sprinter, uh, 8 meters per second basic SI units. When I do that, oh, um, wonder, uh, let me make one of these uh, decimal approximated. That'll force it to, oops, wrong one. <laughs> I need this to be decimal approximated. Okay, yeah. now I have decimal approximation, 1.16 meter per second. Um, I, I guess that makes sense. Um, in some sense, I guess maybe the surprising thing is how, how much, um, it's not as slow as one might think. You know, the mass of the elephant is like, uh, what is it, uh, 50 times, um, 50 times the mass of the sprinter, but, um, but the speed necessary to have the same kinetic energy isn't 50 times as much. And that's because there's this square root. It's, uh, you know, square root of 50 as less, uh, you know. So there's a square root in the factor. So the speed 1.16, it's not that much slower than 8 meters per second. Okay, let's look at the next and the last question in this group. That's a 4-3. So this is the same uh, kind of category of, of question as the other question. It's, uh, um, it, it's uh, asking you to use the definition of kinetic energy to answer some questions relating to kinetic energy. So it's giving us uh, some mass of the bullet. Uh, I'm going to convert this to kilograms when I plug in numbers. There's some speed. That's pretty fast. That's a... Uh, uh, faster than like a twice the speed of sound. Um, seems almost unreasonably fast, but okay. Um, so some speed of wave. So let me, um, since it's asking for kinetic energy, let me just plug in the numbers and uh, get the kinetic energy. It has, um, so one half times the mass. Uh, I'm gonna have the eight grams divided by thousand for kilogram, number in kilograms, times the speed, 830 squared. And I'm putting these dots in to make sure that it does decimal approximation. 
So it has pretty high, yeah, 2756 uh, joules. 2756 joules. And then it's asking, what is its kinetic energy if the speed is halved? Now, let me um, take a different approach than what I've done with the other question. So instead of writing a bunch of equations and um, <laughs> doing algebra, we can actually use something called the scaling relationship. That's a really useful to do tool to do, be able to do mental math. So scaling uh, relationship. And here it amounts to noticing that the quantity that we are changing, speed, speed and the kinetic energy has a certain relationship here. Kinetic energy is proportional to speed squared. And noticing that relationship allows you to do quick mental math, uh, such as if you speed, if you change speed by some factor, you know, uh, increase it by some factor. Then imagining going through that algebra, what you're doing is you're taking this factor and squaring it. So when you change the speed of, by some factor f, your kinetic energy will be changing by that factor squared. So when it says the speed is half, so the factor is one half, then the kinetic energy should be uh, one half squared or one divided by four. So all, all the older math I had need to do is take this number and divide it by four. And I think I can do that in my head. That's going to be six. Um, so let me just start writing that. Six, um, eight, and I have 36. So nine, uh, 689 joule. That should be the kinetic energy if the speed is half. <laughs> Let me just redo it with a calculator to be sure. Oh. Good. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, so that's a technique uh, that we physicists call um, using scaling relationship uh, to be able to do quick mental math when uh, the kind of the changes you are looking at is relatively simple. So, okay. So this is the last of the four question set. Um, let me know if any questions. <laughs>